Welcome to another Artist Opus video, Starry Night, check that out. We are doing special effects painting and how to paint Eldar vehicles, both highly requested, in a ridiculously aggressive time frame. So that is zero airbrush and not even 90 minutes so far. Stick around until the end of the tutorial to see what I do with my remaining five minutes. I'm really pleased with how it's gone so far though and it's all super easy very approachable and anyone can do it and you can also change these colors for whatever you like because we're teaching you the method not the recipe so we have our ship here it's been base coated with nagroth knight now you can do that with an airbrush or you can do it with smushy stippling as i often do on the channel and then next color wise all you're going to need is any bright red so evil sun scarlet i've got there on the palette i'm actually going to try out some of this because I've heard some good things and I've been really enjoying using their white recently. So let's give the uh, the Pro Acryl a little bit of a bash. We're going to be stippling, of course. I have an XL. We may well be dropping to a smaller brush for some of the different sections. One drop off the back of the brush in there. I'm going to work that in well. It's been a while since we've done a large ship on the channel. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with exactly the same type of sequence that I go through on these generally. So I'm just going to be, uh, if I've gone from purple to red, um, just to get that a little bit more delicately, I'm gonna be using a mix of the two. That proportion is entirely up to you. I'd say this is probably about 50-50 though, and that is what I'm gonna be transitioning to as the first layer. So there's a little bit more moisture in the dampening pad that I would normally use. That's absolutely fine though. That's just gonna keep things thin, keep them smooth, and it's gonna avoid the buildup of unnecessary texture. Now, a little bit of texture is absolutely fine, but um, we don't want any more than we're after. So just using a slightly more damp dampening pad um, is a really good way to help achieve that. So go all over the model in this exact way. And basically I'm only gonna be stopping this towards the lines of the panels. That's barely taken any time at all and also it's a really really lovely color that we've ended up mixing here so you can use more or less purple at, or more or less red at any of these stages but basically what we're going to be doing at this point is just transitioning more through to a red i've done quite a big first stage of the red mix with the purple and i'm going to do a pretty large stage again transitioning into the red and it's just exactly as we have done i'm just going to be leaving more space between the panel lines and the sections that I'm kind of stippling into. So just to show you through the process once, grab some of my red, work it into my brush, which obviously has quite a bit of purple on it already. Just take a little bit more purple and then starting in the middle of this big massive panel here, use my dampening pad. Do bear in mind that if you're using a big brush and you're working fast and you're covering a lot of a model, you are gonna have to take more trips back to your dampening pad. Don't, don't view it as a bad thing, um, you can always top it up and that's particularly useful if you're in a, a dry or a hot climate. Obviously in England currently coming up to winter I'm in perfect painting conditions constantly whether I want it or not. It's a little bit too wet but we can roll with it. So just with the stippling and kind of careful application I'm going to start always in the middle of the panels where I'm less worried about anything going wrong and then once I'm happy with the amount of paint on my brush I will fade it towards the edge towards those panel lines and we're just going to do that all over again. I've been timing this, not on screen, but the time has been off to the side and we're looking pretty good. I haven't done the front section. Basically, I've got something there that I'd like to try out. Also, it gives me the opportunity to show two techniques at once. So we've built up this red, um, really nice with the stippling. I just need to give this wing some more neat red attention because it's not quite as bright as the others. Okay, so at this point, I'm done with the pure red. Now I'm using another monument paint here, but I've kept to one that has a direct GW equivalent. So Fire Dragon Bright is available instead of um, Pro Quills Orange. You could transition through Troll Slayer Wild Rider if you wished. Pulling them into each other. Now the red will be stronger than the orange just because it, it always is. It doesn't matter what paint range you're using. I've not used this before, so we're gonna do some discovery. And hopefully I've not been too unsubtle here. That looks to be about right. Generally speaking, when you do do these first steps, they can look a little bit worrying. Just make sure that you've used your dampening pad 
you're not using too much pressure, you've not oversaturated your brush, and then if you have made any mistakes that you do need to fix, they're actually pretty easy to fix. All of these, uh, without exception, you should be starting your strokes at a section you want to end up being super bright. So that is why I've started in the raised middle section of this. Um, I'll do the same with the fuselages, stuff like that, and then I'll work my way to bits where I'm less concerned about kind of once I've got I've got a real idea of how my brush is behaving, how my color is behaving, that's when I go to the areas where I want to be more subtle. So the stuff around the tails, stuff like that. What I want to do here is just take this orange pure. Now this is worrying. <laughs> There's not another way to put it. It is a strong, bold, lovely color. We've picked it for that reason and that is part of what makes it worrying. So I'm going to be really making sure that I remove a lot and test it extensively elsewhere. And then what I'll do is with really careful pressure, I'll test it on edges first where I definitely want it. And then at the point at which I become happy, I'll bring it in and I'll start using it to buff. And it will pick up these edges, not crazy noticeably. We've not got a luminous paint in there and it is a color that exists on the model already, but I'm just gonna go all the way around and give these edges some attention to help them pop. Here I've got a little bit of Vallejo's fluorescent yellow on my palette, just a tiny bit. Mixing it with the orange carefully. It's going to be pretty light. A little bit more orange there. We want a brighter orange. We don't, we're not going for yellow. We're just using yellow to make our orange kind of turboed. Then I've stepped down to a medium here. And this is hopefully going to allow me the ability to kind of rolling edge highlight in some of these bits. Now, if you want something to really pick up on these edges a lot, you're gonna have to hit them with a wipe beforehand or something like that, especially if you're using this technique. You can, of course, go in there with a brush. Uh, I'm not for this one. I want, it, I want it done, I want it finished, I want it speedy. That's the reason I'm not, but um, you can do that. And then the other option, of course, is to uh, give it a varnish and then make the gaps between the panels darker with a wash or something like that. And that will in turn make the edges look brighter in of themselves. You could use an oil wash for that if you wanted. I've got some masking tape here. I have removed uh, a fair portion of the stick uh, from it on my clothing just by placing it literally like on like that, pressing it down and then pulling it off. And now what I'm going to be doing is I've got some funky ideas here. So the reason I've not painted the front is because I want to make this model look as if it is phasing in or out of some type of camouflage. So I've just ripped a random pattern here. Now I've never tried anything like this. I don't know if it's gonna work and you're gonna to get to see live how it goes or doesn't go. So <laughs> fingers crossed as far as that's concerned. I've carefully chosen to end at the point where I can do this without kind of um, it really, really getting in the way as far as the model's concerned. So there we go, we're masked off and now we are ready to press it down very, very thoroughly and then kind of work out what we're going to do with the front of this. In this mix, I have a little bit of Holdra Blue. It's been away on a hiatus, but it's back. And I've put in a little bit of Nagroth Knight because that was our base coat. And then just a, a normal black knight as normal. I've used Vallejo's black for that. Now, if you've got an airbrush, I'd airbrush this. Uh, like genuinely, I would thoroughly recommend doing that instead of doing it with brush brush, just because with brush brush, you've got more chance of it seeping in under the tape. So a couple of tips when you're doing this type of masking, you want to stipple at your um, at your thing at 90 degrees, exactly 90 degrees, and then your brush is less likely to slip underneath. So I'm gonna be stippling carefully around that area with slightly drier paint than I would normally use. I'm not gonna be using wet because if you use wet, it is more likely to um, soak its way under and kind of with capillary action, just do bad things around that masking tape. That's not what we're after. So once I've got a base coat around that bit, which is the bit that I'm worried about, which I will, I will base coat in the minimum way possible with 
drier paint than I would do normally, then I can undercoat the rest of it however I like. But that is the worrying bit. So um, not too thick, not too wet, and take care and go at it at exactly 90 degrees. The rest of it you can undercoat however you want, and if you do have an airbrush, just for your own peace of mind, I'd recommend using that for this section. Okay, so this is extremely experimental. Hopefully this works out all right. The idea that I have is to, over our deep blue black base coat, stipple some other colors uh, thinly, and because they are being stippled over black, they should, in theory, go over it in a way that doesn't basically go over it without having amazing coverage. So I'm gonna try and stipple a band of blue, a band of off green, and a band of off purple um, across it. I'm trying to suggest different hues in a night sky, and we'll see how it goes. Now time to get really frightened. I've got my little nylon brush that I use for everything in the world, including cleaning up models. And, whoa, okay. Hopefully that's not too much. There is our night sky that can get glazed in a second. Um, I think that's been pretty effective though. That's really controllable. It's literally the first time I've ever tried that. I will be using that again in the future. It's a very useful brush. So um, there we go, that's that. Um, there's not too many kind of slip ups on there. It seems to have been quite consistent. I've not accidentally got it on the rest of the vehicle. So now with a couple of glazes, I think I should be able to kind of suggest the night sky. I'm gonna wait for that to dry properly though, otherwise I will absolutely ruin everything. Okay, so I used a glaze of three different colors. I used Orc Flesh, Iandan Yellow, which turns out to be mega strong, be careful with that one, and Voluptuous Pink. And basically they were kind of glazed over yellow, then green, then purple, and I just smushy wet blended them into each other. Uh, really pretty forgiving actually. And then I've gone and made a few little crosses where I want there to be stars suggested. So let's see how our stippling went. That is a pretty clean bond. Uh, line, break, bond's definitely not the right word. I don't think a subtle fade is what's needed. I think a, um, a very small, compact, but harsh fade is what's needed. I want the idea this is kind of like electricity is doing this kind of, you know, technology, science stuff, magnets. So I've got the white line down, which wasn't actually as bad as I thought it'd be. And it has really added to this kind of effect that I'm going for. Just that, that harsh line isn't exactly what I was hoping for. So what I'm gonna do here is mix a little bit of Warpstone Glow with some Moot Green. At this point, I've remembered that there's already a paint that exists, which I've used multiple times before that does exactly what I'm looking for here. So if you are using this, shake it so much. Like this this definitely needs an agitator in it if you've got them. Uh, otherwise you can mix it around physically with a stick or the back of your brush or something like that. But the bottom really wants to separate from the top. So this is Tesseract Glow from GW for those of you who aren't familiar with it. And basically I'm gonna be doing a very quick two-step wet blend with this. Now the reason for this is to kind of get my line to have more evidence and less subtlety of it. It's fading, so I just don't think it's obvious enough what I'm trying to convey. So I'm gonna do a big fat line here. And my lift off point, which is the last point where your brush is before you take it off, which will be huge if you've got too much paint in your brush like I had there, I think that's a bit better. Your lift off point should always be backed up to the line there. So we want it to be brightest there, so the point at which we end our stroke is there. Um, if you're okay with the look how it is like that, that's cool. It is going over black on this side in particular, which means that whatever you do is gonna look way more subtle than it would do on any other color. Um, you can either remove it like I am, you can see I'm depositing it on the back of my hand for a change, or go over to your water pot, really heavily dilute your brush that you've got there, and then just use that to fuzz out what you've got. Either of those methods are absolutely fine. And as you can see here, we've actually got a pretty nice 
blend on the go just from doing that and it is meant to look a bit fuzzy so um, one thing to note if you are doing this um, and you're giving it drying time let it dry like that because the paint is going to run down in this direction up to the line and don't try and do both of these at once because if I were to fuzz over that line now then the lowest point is going to be here whereas now the lowest point is the line so I can't really make any hardcore mistakes he says uh, doing it this way but this is a really good way to do it and I think it's a super solid method for getting that fade that we're going for so I've got a few more minutes left let's go Okay, so that's the meat of it done. Um, I'm sure some of you are wondering what I'm gonna do with the glass on the cockpit. Um, that's always something that I'm, there's so many ways you can go with it and it's quite difficult to pull stuff off. Uh, regarding the metal bits that I haven't painted of this, a dry brush and silver of silver there and you'd be absolutely good to go. Um, I just use kind of the normal methods that I would do with that. With this, I'm gonna try and do something special. Right, it turns out my timer stops at one hour and 39 minutes and 59 seconds. Carrying on the theme of the kind of random splotches and all that stuff. I'm just going to continue to do kind of semi-opaque washes in different colours. Now you can keep things lighter on one side or darker on another, entirely up to you. Or kind of go with any themes you want or literally kind of follow a a planet that you've got on screen or something like that. We are done. I think that kind of uh, final effect has been all right on the uh, on the cockpit window. Let me know your thoughts, so would you approach this a different way? I think definitely we could have also been a bit more bold with the background color within that black behind the stars and with the glazes on this section. So making it more obviously like a, a nebula or something like that would definitely be quite a cool option. But uh, there we go, super effective, super quick, super fun, and really quite a, uh, an interesting process. Okay, so we are done. That added up to a couple of hours total, I think, just a little bit shy. Um, we've kept things fairly minimal, but I think overall that has been quite successful. It's pretty striking. One thing I would definitely say is that I think if we'd masked different sections or we'd done it from extremities inwards or center outwards or something like that with this masking effect, we could have ended up with something that was more obvious in what we're trying to um, kind of convey to people looking at it. And whenever you're trying out something that is fairly high concept in theme, I think it's worth especially with miniatures, just kind of dropping subtlety. That doesn't mean you have to do it badly, but dropping subtlety and making it really clear what it is you're trying to show to people. Um, that was part of the reason for putting the moon on the cockpit is I just want to make it really obvious that that is a starry sky. Um, I could have done some kind of nebulas or swirls in the background there. That would also do a really good job of that. But overall, I think it's been hugely successful. And then just forgetting the front bit, that back section there, has come out really beautifully and that was fast that was really fast before i started doing technical stuff that i hadn't tried before um it barely took an hour to get the entire top half of a vehicle done and that's before i'd kind of exactly decided the colors i was using all the proportions so it's a really really efficient and enjoyable importantly technique um, as i always stress i've gone through some reds and oranges here if you want to go through blues yellows greens purples whatever it is you can just take exactly the same approach Couple of things to note. So, base paints are thicker. Um, foundation paints, heavy pigment paints, whatever you want to call them, they are thicker. What we're doing here isn't massively concerned with coverage. Um, because we're stippling, we're adding on layers and layers and layers and layers and layers, you can apply airbrushing techniques more than kind of blocky flat layering techniques. So, our first layer didn't cover perfectly and neither did any of the following layers. 
Um, so you can use layer paints rather than base paints and that might help you achieve a smoother result. Also, they're slightly less opaque. So if you're looking to build up kind of transitions and blends and all that stuff, um, you can do that in a couple of ways. You can add more water, easily done, dampening pad or even off your palette if you're careful. Or, and you can use paints that aren't quite as heavy coverage. So layer paints, um, even transparency paints if you want it to be really tricky or put some washes in there or anything like that. It's absolutely fine to add in technical products or properties um, to help you achieve what you want to do. You could even put a bit of glaze medium in with your color or just Lamy medium or something like that. So that's a really good way to get super smooth transitions, particularly on something that's all over the place shape-wise. If it's just a flat panel, you can just do it more carefully. Um, but in terms of something this organic, that's a really good way to go about it. So let me know what you think. If you have any ideas about how I could have done the decloaking effect better, um, let me know. I think maybe I should have had the glow just coming from one side to suggest that it, it is cloaking from one side of the vehicle to the other. But, um, you know, learning experiences, everything that's there is a tool for you to be able to use and apply in your own ways. And I would absolutely love to see how you're applying it in the future.